Okay, so in this video, I think we're going to go ahead and um, start digging into some plugins. Um, I think that's kind of the direction I want to go at this point. Eventually, we'll come back to some module stuff. Um, and you guys, of course, are you know welcome to let me know what you think you want to get into next. Um, any suggestions are certainly welcome. Um, but at any rate, I think getting into some of these um, customizing cheat engine kind of plugins will be handy. Um, I know I certainly find them handy. Um, and of course, I'm thinking it was that Y modules and OOP that you kind of saw me making use of some of mine and, and how I I use things and do things and try to automate things. Um, and, and to me, that's just, you know, that, that's super handy when you start talking Lua. Um, and to be honest, I think that's actually where I got into the Lua and Cheat Engine first, really, other than real minor things. Um, but really getting into coding the Lua was actually more that, but I do feel like having that base of how to create, you know, the objects and then just some of the stuff we were doing in those modules will be real handy. And then that way I could kind of touch on the idea that, um, in a sense, um, I'm actually using my plugins more like a module. Um, so like in the auto run folder anymore, you kind of saw on the last video where I showed this, um, so, you know, this actually used to be more the way I used to do it. Um, you know, I, I just started it with the word plug-in, and it kind of helped me keep things separated. Um, and, you know, but eventually it gets to the point to where if I need to disable things or something like that, it's kind of, you know, I mean, it's not that big a deal, really. But it just, you know, felt a little more cumbersome. Um, whereas now I tend to just drop this one file in, and then I actually use my um, modules or my uh, plugins more like a, a module itself um, and we did kind of cover this and how to uh, you know set up the path and that kind of thing so we're not really going to recover that um, it's in the um, how to set up or yeah maybe that was a video where I showed off some of this stuff but anyway how to set up a central uh, code repository or uh, I'm honestly not a hundred percent sure how I <laughs> worded that in the end but uh, it, you know, it's in that uh, Lua Tutorials um, playlist at any rate. Um, talking about just setting up a central code base maybe was the word I used. Um, so that's all we really need. And then at that point we can just call whatever, you know, our, our plugins we want to call. Um, whatever you want to call it. In the end you just kind of have to import that or require that. Um, so we can see here I'm just kind of importing that which brings it to the INI file and then I'm just you know enabling each one of these individually um, it does take away that ability to uh, you know just drop a file in and of course you could certainly just drop a file into the auto run folder when you want to play with it for a minute um, but this gives me more control over load order and all that kind of stuff um, so I was thinking, you know, uh, you know, we could get into an easy one here. Um, so like normally when you open Cheat Engine, and I honestly swear there is already a shortcut for it, um, but it's just not on there. It's not documented. Ah, I might actually be wrong. I don't know. Um, I almost really do. I still almost swear that there is a shortcut to open the Lua Engine from here. Um, otherwise, normally we'd have to open the um, memory view full, uh, form and then we could open the Lua engine. Um, so not a huge deal, but you know, just kind of a simple module to kind of get us, or a simple plugin, I'll probably say that a lot, <laughs> a simple plugin to just get us started and kind of see some of the things we can do. And so what we're going to end up doing in the end is just adding this um, menu item, um, open Lua form and then give it a shortcut. Of course you can give it whatever shortcut you want in the end. Um, so that's all we're going to start with. Something real simple here. You can see it's, you know, not much code. Um, hell, you know, there's enough spaces in here. I could probably trim this down a quarter. But anyway, or enough blank lines. But anyway, um, so all we really need to do is, um, and if you're ever curious and you're poking around and want to figure things out, I mean, there's that um, Windows Control. Um... um Windows control function I gave you already that can kind of give you some stuff. Um, it's certainly not perfect. And of course I'm uploading a video now. So internet is acting really slow. Uh, let me pause for a minute while I, I get to the right file we need. 
Okay, so um, here we're just we're in the cheat engine repository, um, and then we were just kind of in the cheat engine folder within that. Um, that's where we're at here. Um, and these can be a little more cumbersome to find, but um, but pretty much all of the forms are in here. The main thing you're gonna want is the um, LFM, or I, I think that's LFM. Uh, file extension, yeah. Um, I'm still not actually sure if that's an L. I'm, I'm thinking it's an L and not a capital I. <laughs> yeah, so that's an L. Um, that's where different plot types are, are, you know, nice when you have it set up. Anyway, um, and basically these will actually have all the stuff in that form. Um, and th this is just kind of an underlying thing that, I, you know, I think it's more Pascal or maybe the... Um, Oh, Lazarus. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. I don't really mess with it a lot. Um, some of them have the FRM uh, beginning there. But um, So if you're curious about forms, that's a good way to uh, come in here and load it up. And then this, the um, LFM, is actually the same format you can load up in the um, Cheat Engine form-making tool. Um, it, it does give you that option. Uh, yeah, create form. And I got all that stuff way over on the other screen, but at any rate, you know, you can see we can um, we can load an LFM file. So if we downloaded one of those files, we could load it up in here and then start poking around and looking at it and see what things are named and, and all that kind of stuff. I honestly, I don't know if the main form is there, the main form. Um, just because most of the stuff I'd found before I kind of realized this was a way you could do it, you know. Um, and some of them, it's, it's hard to figure out exactly which form is what, but, you know, if you kind of, like I said, if you go ahead and take that, you know, download that um, file or just copy it into a file that you give the proper um, file extension and all that and load it up in there, you can easily see what form is what. Of course, it won't have full functionality because we don't have any of the code behind that. But it does just allow you to kind of look at the form and see buttons and, you know, see what's what and look at names and all that stuff. Because um, I know I actually had a really hard time getting the um, Lua engine window, um, figuring out what these two were. Um, because uh, my window control print function just didn't actually get those correctly initially. I think I did finally fix it um, to get all that. But at any rate... Um, so that allows us to, you know, get the names we would need and that kind of thing to start editing this kind of stuff. But here, you know, I've already kind of found it for you. Um, so like this menu item is just MI table. Um, and then there is there is a ton of different ways you can do this. Um, in all honesty, you can actually just use direct uh, VO print. Uh, main form uh, am I yeah and it probably is in here just like this um, so I mean there's a ton of different ways I don't I honestly gotta admit I'm kind of wondering why I still do it this way <laughs> but, but in the end I do um, it, it does help when you go to look up other stuff because not everything is in there 99% um, of stuff is but I've come across a couple little things that just don't aren't in there in the exact same way um, for some reason um, so it just kind of depends upon what we need to do um, but so all we're doing here is we're just you know checking to make sure that the you know the main form has a menu um, and I have had instances in the past where you you actually end up having to put this in a timer um, and I do already have a video up on and a tutorial on the Fearless Cheat Engine forum on how to make a timer if you're curious about that. But, um, and actually, yeah, we did do one. So, okay. Um, so I have had times where, like, you would have to call this inside a timer to make it work right just to make sure everything is open correctly. But I haven't really had that issue in a long while now. So I don't know if Dark by Change something that, that helps with that or, or if I'm just getting lucky so far. <laughs> Um, so that might be something you need to think about. Um, and then I just give one simple function to call this. It's really not necessary other than 
so that way, I, you know, I don't have to create a wrapper function for the, you know, essentially that's what this is, is my wrapper function. Um, and normally it would actually get a sender, so you could use that, um, but that sender would be, I believe, the actual menu item we create here. Uh, it might be the main form, I'm not, I have to check the name and print it out or something like that. Uh, but at any rate, so we check the main form uh, to see that the menu is there. Um, if not, we need to just exit out of this and, you know, we wouldn't create the menu item, but I have not had an issue with that. Um, and then we just go ahead and basically get the list in a sense. Um, this isn't a normal Lua object, so it does behave a little bit differently. Um, but it's just a... Um, yeah, more or less a list or an array of uh, menu items in the main menu. So it wouldn't be, uh, it would just be like the uh, file, edit, cheat engine. I don't know if cheat engine share would actually be there yet. It depends on when that, because that's another Lua extension actually. Um, and then the table, and, and then this is of course mine, and on down the line. Um, So then here I just set up, you know, an actual object for the menu item tables. And I actually do go ahead and iterate through all those menu items, the main menu items, um, until I find one that matches the one I'm looking for and then set it this way. Um, again, not completely necessary. I just have run into a couple times where you do actually have to do it that way. Here we could just directly call main form dot mi table. Um, and then the main thing to note here is when we iterate through that, it, it, because it's not a normal Lua table, um, it, it does have an index of zero, or a starting index of zero. Um, and then the count will actually return a, a number with a one-based index, and you, you do run into that a lot with, the, with these uh, objects created in Pascal or passed to Lua. So we generally have to do a minus one to it to make sure we don't get a um, index out of bounds. Otherwise, it was the last one. It would tell us that, and we would always skip the first item because this would actually be, you know, like I said, a, a one-based index. Um, so you know, we're just iterating through all those, and then checking the name and going to store it here. Um, and then basically, if we capture one, and this would be a uh, user data. So we couldn't explicitly, we could have checked for uh, user data, but not a table. Um, but generally, the way I'm using this, it, you know, doing it with checking against nil is just fine. Um, and of course, we could just, you know, get rid of that. And it, it should work fine. But um, with the user data object, sometimes just because I'm not always... 100% on how, the, you know, they're going to act normal like Lua would expect. I mean, I... I want to say in this case it would never be a problem, but I just kind of have a habit of doing this, and this may just be more of a stale over, because even here, um, as you've seen in the past, we don't really need to do that. Um, we can just declare nil like that. Um, so anyway, then we're going to create a new menu item. Um, and here we pass it the table menu item, or menu item table, so that way it knows that that's what it belongs to. Um, we looked this up in the uh, Cheat Engine Lua text. That's, it's telling us this would be the parent. It doesn't actually put it in there, though. Um, it, it's, it's, I think it's more for garbage collection. Um, it's not really, you know, it, we could technically make it part of the main form if we wanted to. Um, but then it would actually tag our menu item in the main form, I do believe. Maybe not. Um, but anyway, I make it belong to the table item or the table menu item um, and then I'm just setting the caption you know we're just going to set some properties of our new menu item we created um, setting the caption I do use uh, translate even though you know I, I'm not offering translation files but if someone is doing that it just makes life a lot easier for them because they don't have to actually go and change the code they can just set up a translation file and kind of look at the strings and and add that. Um, I, I'm not honestly real familiar with translation files themselves. I understand the concept um, and you know that it's nice if you use a translate function um, but I just don't uh, you know I speak English and I read English and that tends to be what everything is in so I just it's not something I've really ever needed to deal with. Um, 
but I do try and offer that ability for people that do, you know, that do speak other languages. Um, and then, of course, if you do that, you know, that might make life a lot easier for you in the end, hopefully. Uh, again, and if somebody is making translations for this kind of stuff and, and I need to do something different to make that work better, um, let me know. Because, um, I, you know, I, I do like to offer that versatility to anybody using my code. Um, so at any rate, carrying on. Um, we set a shortcut here, and the shortcuts are, are super simple. It's just, you know, kind of the normal... Um, text you would actually even see in here if you're unfamiliar with you know what how to do it um, and so I'm just doing that control L because control alt L is already the table Lou and I haven't had a problem with it doing something else at the same time um, I don't know if that's actually a shortcut inside the main form I don't believe it is I haven't like I said I, I there might be some funky scenario where it is but you know in my testing I haven't run into an issue um, and then we just set our on click function to our, our, our function wrapper here. Um, and then um, here I'm doing something a little different. This one I actually did have to find, you know, search kind of through the uh, menu items, get to this menu item, and then see what its property was set to. Um, I'm sure if you dug, if you found the main form uh, L, LFM file, um, you know you could probably see what it is there but I just kind of went you know poking around until I figured it out um, but if we set the image index at 10 it then you know gives us that Lua moon I do believe that is because uh, Lua is Portuguese for moon if I'm remembering right <laughs> I think that's right anyway uh, so then we just need to insert it in the table um, in the table menu item and here Again, this would actually be a zero-based index, so because I want to set it after the um, main cheat engine Lua table script, um, we go ahead and give it an index of one, so that way it puts it right here for us. Um, and we don't have to add any separator because there was already a separator there and all that, um, so not a big deal. Um, and you know, and that's kind of the the end of it. Other than I've wrapped that in a function just to you know, this could be all outside the function, but. Um, I just prefer to wrap things on functions for some goofy reason. Um, this way, again, you know, if I needed to take this out while I was testing some stuff, I could quite easily without commenting on a bunch of code. Um, not that I've really, you know, again, now that I've gone modular, I don't really, you know, I could just comment out the file. So <laughs> it's kind of redundant, but um, redundancies aren't a terrible thing sometimes. Sometimes they are, but sometimes not so much. Um, anyway. Um, so that's kind of it for this plugin. Um, as you can see, it's not really too complicated, especially after doing some of the objects and inheritance and all that. I mean, we're just kind of doing some pretty basic things, iterating through a list, um, and we covered how you really don't necessarily have to do it that way in this case. Um, and then just create a menu item and, and add our stuff to it. If you're already making cheat engine trainers, you know, this won't be much of anything to you. At most, I might be telling you what this is named, <laughs> you know? Um, and again, maybe you don't need that functionality, but it just kind of gives you the idea that, you know, we, we can do a lot with, um, Lua and Cheat Engine, um, and, and, you know, and of course, um, there is a, a tool, if you were unaware of this, um, tool bases, I think it's only, I don't remember if you had a C sharp, um, for more true plugins, yeah, C sharp template right there. Um, so you can actually even do plugins with that. I, I've honestly never messed with it much. Um, I, I think I have opened this one time just to look at it, but that was literally about all I did. And then C. Um, so, you, you know, there's a lot of different help. Um, and I believe with this one, because of the way, I don't think this one you can actually extend the Lua stuff. Whereas I, oh, maybe you can, yeah. So, you know, if you're into C Sharp, that's something definitely to look at if you're unaware that that's in there. Um, it's just in the plugins folder in the Cheat Engine directory. Um, and so that's always another way to go, you know, another route to go. That way you can actually have a, more of a proper tool. I do believe I, I have a tool that I just don't have enabled. No, I don't. Because no. there are a number of tools you can use. Um, and that would be if you created a proper tool, um, it would, you know, you'd have to add it to here. Um, you know, actually, I don't know, that's the wrong kind of thing. Uh, 
And this one would be, I do believe, like opening the calculator and stuff like that. So if you're unaware of that, um, you could actually do that, you know, navigate to a calculator um, and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, more simplistic. I think, yeah, plugins is what I was thinking. But this, oh, there we go. Um, and then, you know, I could just enable this. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. We need to add a new one. It'd be here. Um, and then there, I, I think it's just a DLL is what you have to select. Yeah. yeah. Um, so again, you know, we do have lots of options. I just ended up going with Lou in the beginning, and that's kind of what I've stuck with now. Um, not sure what we'll do next. I'm thinking this video ain't very long. Let me think about that a second. Okay, so I do believe we're just going to go ahead and leave off there with the first one, because this video was already pretty close to 20 minutes. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, when doing the plugins, there isn't really a, a good way to re-import or any of that, so you really do just have to close Cheat Engine and reopen it to get it to run everything in that auto-run folder again, and thus run our code, which brings it to the uh, our plugins folder if you're setting it up that way. Um, but you know so we, you should have a uh, open lua engine uh, memory I or uh, menu item uh, with a control l shortcut or whatever you decided to set it to um, that'll just you know when messing with lua it just it, to me it just makes life a little easier because i can quickly jump into that without having to go into the memory view form and then of course that one still works fine um, so even if you've got the other one, you know, if this one has focus, it's not, you know, you can do either or. Um, so yeah, we'll leave off there. I'm going to have to think about where we're going to go next. Um, yeah, so anyway, on to the next.